There's no glory in war. It's just something they tell soldiers so they'll risk their lives. It's you no one of those Skyrim for the Nords types? The but who's going to stop you? Me? I'll have no part of that. And you're right. At least as far as I'm concerned. Don't let Ulfric or some of these other short-sighted Nords bother you. Most of us are happy to welcome newcomers. Whenever a group of marauders attack a Nord village, Ulfric is the first to sound the horn and send the men. But a group of Dark Elf refugees gets ambushed? A group of Argonians or a Khajiit caravan? No troops. No investigation. Nothing. There's a group of cutthroats out there right now that Ulfric doesn't lift a finger to bring to justice. As long as they don't threaten Nord land. That's a brave offer. I'd be happy to throw in my coin behind that. You deal with them. I'll make sure you get paid. Maybe this old soldier will throw in some lessons as well. I killed a lot of High Elves in the Great War, and I didn't die. I guess that makes me a war hero. The Great War. There was nothing great about it. Thousands died on both sides. And where did it get us? Did we really save the Empire? Or did we just plant the seeds for Ulfric's uprising? And another war. Help the Dark Elves? Oh, you must have heard me talking to Malfir. The Dark Elves live in a run-down slum called the Grey Quarter. Ulfric's content to keep it that way. I guess they think I can open Ulfric's eyes to their plight and get him to lift a finger on their behalf. I'm trying, but Ulfric is set in his ways. For him, there's two kinds of people in this world. Nords and the folk beneath them. Show those marauders what Windhelm justice tastes like. Why we're wasting time and dwindling resources chasing a legend. We don't even know it exists. The Jarls are upset. They don't all support you. Damn the Jarls. They demand the moot. And damn the moot! We should risk letting those milk drinkers put Torek's women on the throne? Next in She'll hand Skyrim over to the elves on a silver plate. All the more reason then. The crown would legitimize your claim. Talos guide you. A crown doesn't make a king. No, but this one. Talos guide you. If it even exists. It exists. And it will be the symbol of the righteousness of our Keep cause. Your eyes open. Think about it. The jagged crown. It heralds back to a time Talos before guide you. Jarls and Moots. Back to the time when the king was a king because his enemies fell before him and his people rose because they loved him. Skyrim needs that king. You will be that king, Ulfric. You must be. You're certain you found it? When have I ever been false with you? Fine. I'll send the unblooded here with you. Fancy a crawl through a moldering dungeon to see if you can't stir up Garmar's jagged crown. It will be there. You see, you're alive. I owe Ulfric a drink. I have to admit, I didn't think we'd be seeing you again. I misjudged you. You're definitely Stormcloak material. It's time we made this official. You ready to take the oath? Before you're one of us, you must swear fealty to Jarl Ulfric Stormcloak, future High King of Skyrim. 
You must also pledge unswerving loyalty to your fellow Stormcloaks, to Skyrim, and to her people. Don't take too long figuring it out. Might mistake your hesitation for Imperial sympathies. Come back when you're committed to the cause, or go join the Legion. They're taking anyone with a pulse these days. Still here. Mm. Damn Tullius. He's pocketed men in the rift. It's dangerous having Imperial skulking about on the southern border of East March. Not entirely true. Though not entirely false, either. Any Nord can learn the way of the Voice by studying with the Greybeards. Given enough ambition and dedication, my shouting torque to the ground proved he had neither. However, it was my sword piercing his heart that killed him. Soon enough, we will march on Solitude, and on that day the heroes of Sovereign Guard will march with us, and the Empire will fall to its knees in fear. We're fighting because we're done bleeding for an empire that won't bleed for us. Untold numbers of Nords die defending the empire against the Dominion. And for what? Skyrim being sold to the Thalmor so the Emperor could keep his throne. We're fighting because our own Yarls, once strong, wise men, have become fearful and blind to the people's suffering. We're fighting because Skyrim needs heroes, and there's no one else but us. I killed Torek to prove our wretched condition. How is the High King supposed to be the defender of Skyrim if he can't even defend himself? Indeed, Elisif has become Jarl of Solitude. Historically and conveniently home of the High King, backed by Imperial interests. But the Moot has not yet met the Namer High Queen. And they won't. Not as long as I have any say in it. I challenged him in the traditional way. And he accepted. There were many witnesses. No murder was committed. True, he didn't stand a chance against me. But that was precisely the point. He was a puppet king of the Empire, not a High King of Skyrim. His father before him, perhaps, but not Torik. He was too privileged and too foolish. More interested in entertaining his queen than ruling his country. There hasn't been a true High King in Skyrim for generations. For too long he's been hand-picked by the Emperor, and given emphatic nods by milk-drinking Jarls addicted to Imperial coin. It's time we had a real High King. One of our own making. My father, the Great Bear of Eastmarch, died during my imprisonment after the Mark Garth incident. I, his only son, forced to deliver his eulogy via letter I had smuggled out of prison, such as the love of Titus Mead for his subjects. When finally set free, I returned to Windhelm and was greeted by a city in mourning, at one with my own grief and anger, clamoring in angry voices, calling out for justice, for war. They sat me on the throne, the throne of Isgomor, the throne of my father. I only hope I can prove worthy of that honor. Be careful out there. The Stormcloaks are finding victory across the land. 